Hello, everyone. You know, my guest today symbolizes everything America is and can be, an immigrant from Vietnam. He is now an American citizen, college lecturer, and author. Well, my guest today is Hoi B. Tran. His memoir is a must-read to comprehend the complexities of Vietnam and the war fought there. The account spans decades from Hoi's initial youthful support of Ho Chi Minh in 1945 in North Vietnam through his eventual dissatisfaction, opposition, and service as a South Vietnamese pilot combating Hanoi's communists. One major mistake running through America's involvement and extending into grossly flawed historical accounts is inexcusable failure to listen to the Vietnamese people themselves to understand their views, their patriotism, their motivations. Hoy's book was a long overdue correction to this inexcusable flaw containing important information unavailable in most accounts. Read it and learn from it. Now, I am quoting Bill Lorry from the United States Army, who is a Vietnam vet. This is the book. Okay, Hoi, if I may call you that, or Major Tram, you started in a, were born in a little village in North Vietnam. So you made quite a transition. And how did that all come about? I uh, was born in uh, Hanoi, right mm -hmm. in the city of Hanoi, North Vietnam. And uh, my father was... Uh, small business person, mm -hmm. uh, own a watch repair clock and an electrical uh, repair shop. And uh, at the age of 10, uh, in 1945, uh, I was so fascinated to uh, get the local uh, people to uh, unleash me into the uh, Vanguard Youth Troop Group. Mm -hmm. Th that was with Ho Chi Minh? That is correct, mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. Sort of like Hitler's youth. <laughs> yes, yes, basically. Uh -huh. but, but, but there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the age of 10, I was so fascinated with uh, Ho Chi Minh. Yeah. And I revered him at the time. And uh, probably because of uh, heavy indoctrination, mm -hmm. political indoctrination and whatnot. So when Ho Chi Minh was in Hanoi reciting the uh, Declaration of Independence, I was there with my group waving the flag, singing, Who Loves Uncle Ho Chi Minh More Than Us Vanguard Children? Mm, but I was wrong. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, now let me ask you so that I have a perspective. When he was announcing independence, was that then to speak? How, how did that go? Because you, we now have the south. We had the south and the north during the war. So the North Vietnamese was a separate state at that time. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. My All memory right. isn't that good at this okay. moment. I don't. I don't recall. All right. Let's backtrack a little bit. Yeah. At the time I was ten. Yeah. Vietnam was not yet divided. That's what I thought. Okay. okay. And uh, at the time, it. Uh, Prior to the end of World War II, yeah. Ho Chi Minh came back from China. Uh -huh. And uh, more specifically, the independence for Vietnam was as a result of the Japanese who ousted the French, okay. not Ho Chi Minh and the communists. All right. The Ho Chi Minh and communists inherited the independence free Mm -hmm. from any fight, didn't lose any drop of blood mm -hmm. to inherit that independence. I see. And that's why Ho Chi Minh named, proclaimed himself president of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam then. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, it was also Ho Chi Minh who later on signed an agreement with the French for the French to return to Vietnam for five years. Mm -hmm. He should not have done that to begin with because the Vietnamese were so happy that the Japanese ousted the French. Oh, and why Ho Chi Minh got them back. Yeah. And the reason was that Ho Chi Minh, at the time that the Japanese surrendered mm -hmm. to the United States because of the two atom bombs, mm -hmm. and uh, Japanese had to leave Vietnam. The Allied forces sent the Chinese 
the nationalist Chinese over to North Vietnam to disarm the Japanese. Mm. In the South, the British armed forces would come to disarm the Japanese. Ho probably did not like the nationalist Chinese because the nationalist Chinese could be sympathetic to non-communist Vietnamese patriots. So Ho signed the agreement for the French to come back for at least two reasons. One, French would recognize its government. Two, French would help him liquidate the non-communist patriots mm. for okay. Ho Chi Minh. All right, now, I, I made you backtrack, but now I want to know, you were 10 when you revered Ho Chi Minh, mm -hmm. and then what made you realize uh, he was wrong? What made you change your mind and eventually get to the South? The, the, the first thing was that he got the French back. Mm -hmm. When the nationalist Vietnamese patriots were angry at him, telling him, why did you betray the revolution cause? And he said that he would rather sniff French, sorry, <laughs> whatever, okay. Yeah, for yeah. five years mm -hmm. than to have to eat Chinese dung for a thousand years. I see. But then subsequent to getting the French back, French wanted to reestablish colonial rule in Vietnam. Ah. And that created the friction between Ho and the French. Mm -hmm. Honeymoon period was over. Yeah. They fought each other then. And then, knowing that his ragtag armed forces could not fight the French, he, Ho himself, vowed to the Chinese mm -hmm. to get the Chinese to help him. Yeah, because we always heard, well, this, this, the North was on the side, the Chinese were helping. And, right. and so we were vaguely uh, actually fighting the Chinese in a way. So that's, that background is interesting to me. Yeah. I don't think mm -hmm. any of our, I doubt that our viewers knew that. Maybe they did. I did not well, Since the Chinese established communists in, 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 in mainland China with Mao Zedong mm -hmm. as the chairman there. Right. In 1949, yeah. China and they call them the People's Republic of China. They signed the next year. They signed an agreement with the USSR. Mm -hmm. you see, and uh, China helped North Vietnam with that war with the French. So then, how did you go to the South, and why did you go to the South? At the age of 18. Yeah. A few years later, after Ho Chi Minh has shown his true color as a very loyal, fanatical, overzealous communist mm -hmm. with the land reform that killed hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese landlords. I was drafted at the age of 18 into the nationalist Vietnamese in North Vietnam. Mm -hmm. But I was lucky in the sense that when that began, the Vietnamese Air Force, nationalist Vietnamese Air Force began to recruit airmen for sending two friends for training. So I was lucky in the sense that I enlisted into the Air Force as opposed to going for the draft to go to the Army. For the North, originally? No, no, for, 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 the, for the nationalist Vietnamese. Two That's, different things. That, that was the South? Yes. Okay. He was the South. But how did you get to the South? Uh, when I reached the age of 18, I was drafted into the Nationalist Vietnamese Air Force in Hanoi. Back then, Hanoi was still under French control. And we, the South, uh, the, 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 the Nationalist Vietnamese and the French were fighting the communists led by Ho Chi Minh, even in Hanoi. Oh, that's interesting. I right. didn't know that ever happened. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I was in the Air Force, I was sent to a French fighter squadron approximately 70 miles or 60 miles east of Hanoi. And that fighter squadron, French fighter squadron, happened to be one of a few squadrons in North Vietnam that provided air ground support for the Dien Bien Phu mm -hmm. defense. So at that time, Vietnam was still one country and elements in Vietnam, they were fighting against the communists, even in the North, yes. correct? That is correct, yes. Yeah. The, uh, at the time, uh, Hanoi and the vicinity 
were still under French control and the nationalist Vietnamese control. Mm -hmm. Ho Chi Minh and his uh, guerrilla were outside of Hanoi in the jungle. But, so, but when you were a child, he had been president. So now he was sort of ousted? Was that's that right. Okay, that's right. You. Yes. As, right. A, as, a result, as a result of the French and, 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 and yeah. Viet Minh fight, and they ousted Viet Minh to the jungle. Right. Yes. And then I was in the uh, National Viet Minh Air Force uh, working as a, uh, an apprentice mechanic, mm -hmm. uh, helping the French to fight the Viet Minh. But then, unfortunately, uh, with the help from China, and also they outnumber the French numerically and, 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 and power. Yeah. So French was defeated at uh, Dien Bien Phu uh, on uh, May, I believe, May 1954. Mm -hmm. Yes. So with the uh, collapse of Dien Bien Phu, the Geneva Agreement was signed in July 1954 to divide Vietnam into two countries mm. at the 17th parallel. From 17th parallel up north would be under Ho Chi Minh and the communists. From the 17th parallel down to the south would be under the former Emperor Bao Dai and later on with the Mr. Ngo Dinh Diem coming from France to become a prime minister of South Vietnam with the name of Republic of Vietnam from the South, no communist. Okay, now, we have to, because we are a republic and we have sponsors. <laughs> so, we're gonna come back to you and I'm gonna find out, then obviously you did not want to stay in the North or continue fighting on that side. So we're gonna come back and please stay with us. A Vietnamese fighter pilot in an American war tells why the South Vietnamese people were and continue to be one of the most pro-American people on earth. The story of the author's struggles to become a fighter pilot to protect his country, family, and friends could be the story of any number of young American men. Major Tran's courage and devotion to duty, friends, family, and his basic decency and morality give background to why America was in Vietnam and why we should have never left them to their fate. And I is, is a quote from Philip Jennings, former United States Marine Corps pilot. Was he over there when you were there? Uh, Phil was there when I uh, already was uh, deployed to uh, Department of Transportation to oh. fly for Air Vietnam. Yeah, okay, now how did you get from, you were, you were with the National Air Force, and then suddenly the, the country is divided. So then what happened to you? Okay, so with the Geneva Agreement, Vietnam was divided. Yeah. And then I had a few days to make a decision and I decided to go south with my unit, the French Fighter Squadron. Mm -hmm. So I returned home to Hanoi to ask my mother. My, my, my father was already gone. Mm -hmm. My father passed away before that. So I asked my mother to see whether or not she would go to the south with me and my siblings. But unfortunately, my mother decided to stay back in Hanoi because she could not get rid of the property and not enough time. Mm. So I decided to go south, hoping that my mother will eventually, after getting rid of the property, to gather some money to go south later. But unfortunately, the bamboo curtain fell fast and my mother and my siblings got trapped in North Vietnam. Uh -huh. I went to the south and from there, instead of going to France for training. Because of the defeat of the French, France ceased providing training to the South, to, to, to the Viet nationalist Vietnamese. I see. So in the summer of 1955, instead of going to France, I was sent to the United States to be trained by the U.S. Air Force. Oh, that's interesting. See, I didn't realize that either. Uh -huh. So I first set foot on America soil in the summer of 1955. Uh -huh. And you liked it? Loved it. Okay. I loved it. Yes, everything was, was amazing. It's an eye-opening from, 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 for, for a boy who was in Hanoi thinking that Paris would have been the greatest place on earth. <laughs> but when I see Chicago, that was 
Illinois was the first state that I was in yeah. for training yeah. at Chinook Air Force Base in, in Rental, Illinois. And seeing Chicago, that was something else. <laughs> Our Chicago viewers are going to love it. Yes. <laughs> okay, so then, then how you became a pilot. Over, so was through training first, in this country? Yes, I was trained by the U.S. Air Force to yeah. become a mechanic first. Uh -huh. And then I returned to Vietnam, was assigned to an observation squadron as a mechanic. And uh, I was an NCO then, yeah. and I was not happy with my rank at the time, and I was thinking about trying to excel in the Air Force. And, you did. <laughs> and I had a friend who went to Friends for pilot training, mm -hmm. and the interesting thing was that I did say in the book in that when I was on a C-47 going from North Vietnam to the South. Mm -hmm. I was in the C-47 when the aircraft commander opened the door to go out. It was a friend of mine who went to France in the end of 1952 for his pilot training. Yeah. And he was the aircraft commander. And when I looked at him, he was like John Wayne. <laughs> and and I, I thought to myself that I'll have to, to try to become what he is now. Well, obviously you yes. did. Uh -huh. You became a pilot. You right. are a major in the Vietnamese right. Air Force, or right. so you became. Yeah. Uh, what right. made you write the book? I mean, you go into much more, and I want to ask you more. Mm -hmm. But but what made you? What what inspired you to write this book? And another question before you answer that: It's a Vietnamese fighter pilot in an American war. We, you are an American now, but most of us, we refer to it as the Vietnam War. We never say an American war. So why did you use it in the title that way? Well, one, it is sort of a lament about a Vietnamese fighter pilot that, that fought a war that, uh, that his own country did not have the authority to decide the war strategy. I see or the conduct of the war. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a little man thing. <laughs> so it is, was in your eyes, an American right. war. And then when, uh, when we send, we meaning the United States back then, when the U.S. sent combat troops to Vietnam, it, to many Vietnamese, it Americanized the war as opposed to a war f for the Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. See, so that's why I... Yeah made the title, uh, The British Fighter Pilot in American War. But you have, yeah. and you bring this out in the book, I mean, you feel there was no need for the law, that war to be lost, and most people refer to it in this country as a war that we lost. No, we, um, we did not lose the war in Vietnam. I vehemently deny that and ascertain that no, we, the United States Armed Forces, mm -hmm. never did lose the war in Vietnam. So then how did the how did the Ho Chi Minh group get into the South and take it over? Okay, well, uh, let me answer you the question you asked me about the reason to write the book. Mm -hmm. And part of my answer will cover that question good, also. Good, good, okay. wonderful. The impetus that pushed me to write the book is to let my American compatriots understand or hear the perspective of a Vietnamese who fought in the war from childhood, from, 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 from the age of 10 all the way to the age of 40, mm -hmm. 22 years of active duty. Anyway, so the reasons are multifold. First and foremost, the United States, unlike the distortion and misreporting by the liberal news media at the time, we, the United States Armed Forces, involved in the war in Vietnam with a just cause, and it was noble. For without the American help, Vietnam would have been swallowed by the North Vietnamese communists. After the division of North and South Vietnam, 
way before 1975. Yeah. Okay. That was one. The number two for, for, for the impetus that, that pushed me to write the book, number two was that the collapse of South Vietnam was not because of the corruption or the unwillingness to fight as slandered by the news media at the time. The undeniable fact was that because of the lopsided balance of power. When we, the United States, cut aid, military aid to the Republic of South Vietnam to the bone, mm. North Vietnamese armed forces received quadruple the amount of supplies to fight against us. So numerically, they are superior, and they were much better equipped at the time. So that was the real cause of the undeserved demise of the Republic of South Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, I mean, you are an American and you fought under America. Do you feel that things would have been different if the Americans hadn't gone in uh, to begin with? I mean, you would have been swallowed originally, right? W with yeah. all the American military helps, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then, then we withdrew. And of course, we did the same thing to Chiang Kai-shek, in a way. A while, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and were you aware while you were fighting over there of things like Jane Fonda and going over to the north and all that publicity? Yes, Jane Fonda, Mr. Ramsey Clark, and many other ministers uh, mm -hmm. in different religions went to North Vietnam, uh, praising North Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, that gave them a big boost of, course. of morale. Yeah. Okay, uh, so... Because time is fleeting on our show, unfortunately. You want everyone to read this wonderful book, right? And to know the truth behind what happened. Because yes. we don't hear that. We never hear it from someone from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, that my American compatriots should understand is that the root cause of the war in Vietnam way back from the mid-40 all the way to the 50 the, and the 70, stem from the greedy, fanatical, barbaric North Vietnamese communists led by the very loyal communist member Ho Chi Minh. So all of the anti-war should have been directed at them because right. they started the war. Yeah. We were in legitimate self-defense with the help from the Americans. So mm -hmm. that is why I said the involvement of the U.S. was just and noble. Okay. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. you, uh, I think it's wonderful that, that you have written this book and that people can read it and find out because we do get a lopsided story. And, of course, historic, that happens a lot, unfortunately, in history. And we are almost out of time, but you actually were the one who escorted people to the Geneva, uh, what conference was it, where they... Oh, uh, that was a, a very, very strange uh, situation that, uh, that uh, I was deployed to fly for the national, uh, the nation-owned airline, uh -huh. Air Vietnam. And when I was deployed to fly for Air Vietnam, I was also picked to uh, be one of the uh, cockpit crews to fly the Vietnamese delegation to Paris to attend the, the peace talk with uh, mm. Dr. Kissinger and the North Vietnamese, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to, again, thank you so very, very much. And you can get the book. Where can you get the book? Is it online? Is it yes, stores? Yes, it is, it is on Amazon, it is on Barnes & Noble online, and it is on many bookstores online. Yeah, okay. Yes. Thank you again, Major Tram, and I want to say that you spoke for the Palm Springs Air Museum. You do lecture. You lecture at colleges and universities, and it's wonderful. And I hope that you, our viewers, I know you enjoyed this, and tell your friends to watch us 
uh, on demand because you can get us on the local uh, Time Warner on demand uh, anytime, morning or evening, anytime you want it. And also you can keep up with me on my website and uh, Facebook and occasionally I tweet on Twitter <laughs> as Small Scribe. So we'll see you here next time.